Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to calculate the Greeks for option spreads. So here are some of the packages we're going to require for this tutorial. The first thing I'm going to set is the ticker. So we're going to be pricing index options, specifically the SPX options. So here I'm going to subset the option chain I want. Uh, you don't need to have data for this. It would help, but for this tutorial, I think you're just going to need the prices of the options. So I'll run ticker and then I'm going to subset the options that expire August 21st. Now I need to get the risk free rate. So I'll use get symbols Fred. I use DGS 10, which is the 10 year treasury. I'll set that to my global environment. Since these are annual quotes, I need to convert the last available rate to daily. So I'm going to divide by 100 and then by 360. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. So here I'm going to set the expiration date. I'm going to set that equal to as date 2020 0821. I'm going to set today equal to system date. I'm going to calculate the number of days to expiration by subtracting today from EXP. I'm going to save the underlying price of the index here. So the index actually closed at 330651. So I'm going to be using calls to calculate Greeks on a bull spread. So the first strike will be 3350 and then the second strike will be 3355. My risk free rate will be as numeric. I'm going to get the compounded return of DGS 10. So I'll do one plus DGS 10 raised to the number of days to expiration. And lastly, I'm going to subtract one. So that would be my risk free rate for dividends. I'm going to set this equal to zero because SPX will not pay any dividends throughout the lifetime of this option. I need to calculate the number of years to expiration. So I'll use year fraction from our quant lib. So my start date will be today. End dates will be expiration. Day counters will be one. Okay, so now I'm going to run this block. I'm going to calculate the implied volatilities of each strike by using BS call implied volatility. So S is going to be my stock price. K will be the strike. R is the risk free rate. Double T will be EXP. D will be the dividend. And then the price will be the options price. So I'm going to take a look at the options chain to see the price. So I'll be using the mark price, which is basically the average between the bid and the ask. So I'll use 2680. I'm going to copy this, change this to strike two, and the price for that option is $24.85. I'll then run these two lines. I'm going to do vol. So I'm going to calculate the average between volatility one and volatility two. So if we go to the console, we see that the implied volatility of the first and second strikes is approximately 16%. So our average is 1622. Alright, so I'm going to write a function to calculate the price of the debit spread. So we'll do call debit spread. 
So we need to insert S for the stock price, V for the volatility, R for the risk-free rate, double T for the time to expiration, D for the dividend. I'm going to set K1 and K2 for our strikes. And I'm going to use BS call. And I'll do S, K1, V, R, double T, and D. So call debit spread is the first strike minus the second strike. So here's our function for our call debit spread. So I'll go ahead and run that. All right, so now I'm going to calculate the Greeks. And I'm going to store these as a data frame by rounding everything to four decimal places. So I'll do Greeks call debit spread. S will be the stock price. V will be our volatility. R will be our risk free rate. Time to expiration is EXP. D will be div. K1 will be our first strike. And K2 will be the second. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this line. Take a look at the console. So here we see that the price for this debit spread is 168. And then we have our Greeks. All right, so let's go back to our code. So here I'm going to store the break even by running strike one plus Greeks premium. So this will be our break even price. So the cool thing about using this function is that we can insert ranges for some of these variables. So if you want to take a look at what would the Greeks be if the price changes or we have changes in volatility, we can do that. So I'm going to be inserting a range for the stock price and see what the Greeks will be for this call spread. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it here. All right, so for the index prices, I'll use 3,000 to 4,000. So I'll go ahead and run that line. We'll take a look at this data frame. So here we see our Greeks for the price of the index at 3,000, 3,001, 3,002, and so on, up to 4,000. So what I'll do next is I'm going to take away this function name and the underscore to isolate the stock price because I want to chart this. So I'll do stock price equals as numeric. And I'll use G sub call debit spread underscore. I'll replace that with an empty space by using the names in this data frame. I'll then have to transpose it by using T and the data frame. I'll then need to convert it back to a data frame. So I'll use as data frame. And then I'll insert a column for the stock price. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. We'll take a look at our data frame. So now this is what our data frame looks like. I'll then need to reshape this data frame so that we can use ggplot. So I'll do prem. I'll insert some pipes and I'll use gather. I'll set the key value by using the stock price and the premium. We'll go ahead and run this line. Take a look at our data frame now. And now it's in long form. Now we can use ggplot. 
So I'll do ggplot, insert that data frame, our aesthetics, I want the x-axis to be stock price and the y-axis to be the values. I'll go ahead and insert lines by using geom line plus I'm going to add some labels so x will be index price and y will be value. I'm going to insert a vertical line on the x-intercept for the break-even. I'll set the color to red. Line type will be dashed. And then I'll do the same thing. But this will be for the current price, the current price of the index. So I'll change this to a different color. I'll leave this as dashed and then I'll shade the region of the charts where the spread will be profitable. So anything past our break even would be a profitable area. So I'll use rect x min will be our break even x max will be infinity y min will be negative infinity and y max will be infinity. I'm going to fill this area with the blue shaded region. I'll set alpha equal to 0.1 and color equal to NA. And then I want charts for each of the Greeks. So I'm going to use facet wrap by using the key scales set that equal to free. All right, so now I'm going to plot this. Let's go take a look at the chart. All right, so this is our chart. So the black line is the close price for the index. The red is our break even point. Anything past that is our profitable region. So we see the behavior of the Greeks for this spread if the price fluctuates. But the problem with this is this is with everything else held constant. But this is just a basic snapshot of what would happen to the Greeks if the price fluctuates that day. So you kind of get the idea how to use these functions to plot the Greeks for that spread. I'll do one more example of a more complex spread. So we'll take a look at a butterfly call spread. So same basic concept. We need to build a function. But now we need to have three strikes. So we'll do S, K1, K2, and K3. V, R, double T, and then D. So for the butterfly, it'll be VS call. So this will be for the first strike. VR, double T and D. I'm going to add that to two times. I'm going to copy this. Replace this with the second strike. And I'm going to change this to negative two. I'll then copy this and this will be for the third strike. I'll go ahead and run this function. So for the strikes, I'll do 3350 for the first strike. For the second strike, I'll do 3355. And the last one will be 3360. I'm going to copy my vol implied volatility functions. So for the third strike at 3360, 
its value is $22.95. So I'll go ahead and run this block. And our new volatility will be vol1 plus vol2 plus vol3 divided by 3. I'll then calculate the Greeks. So I'm going to copy this function. And then I'll add K3 to be equal to strike 3. And then I'll change this to call bfly. And then I'll run this block. Let's go to the console. And then I'm going to display the Greeks. So here our price should be approximately 8 cents. And then we have our Greeks. All right, let's go back to our code. So here I'm going to plot these again. So I'm going to copy all this block. So instead of the stock price, I'll be doing a sequence of volatilities from 10% all the way to 90% spread out by 10%. We'll change this to call bfly. I'm going to change this to call bfly. I'm going to add the third strike. I'll go ahead and run this block. And then we'll plot it. So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to take away the vertical lines and the annotation. Go ahead and plot it now. Take a look at the chart. And now we see the Greeks for this butterfly spread at different volatilities. So the X label should be volatilities, not the index price. All right, so I hope with these two examples, you get the gist of it. You just need to build a function for your spread, calculate the implied volatilities and the Greeks, do some formatting so that we can plot the Greeks. So I hope this video helped out. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.